All right, this is a really cool problem and it illustrates something important about related rates that we'll get to. And I took this directly from uh, the special fourth edition of Calculus of a Stingle Variable by Larson, Hostetler, and Edwards, which is published by Houghton How, How Mifflin. How do you say the name of that company? Houghton Mifflin. Yeah, I believe it's Houghton Mifflin. Okay. Um, in fact, that is the, the book that I've been using as inspiration and, and, and guidance for this whole course. So if you're interested, uh, I do recommend it. I, it's the book I used when I took calculus, and, and I, I like it. Okay. Anyways, that being said, um, let's look at this problem. So there's a lot more text written in, in, in the problem, but I'm just going to explain it to you. So we have this security laser up here. In the book, it's actually a camera if you do have the book, but I like to think of it as a laser. And this, this laser is rotating back and forth. So it's going to cover this whole area. It's got to cover this 100 feet. So we're in some, some art gallery, and we want to make sure that no art thieves come in. So this laser is sweeping across the floor, and if somebody trips it, you know, an alarm is going to go off. It has to sweep this whole 100 feet, and so it, it, it also moves through some angle, right, as it's moving. Okay. And, and what happens is that it's actually easier to build a camera where the angle of rotation is, uh, the rate of rotation is constant. So meaning the rate at which this, this thing moves, uh, the angle, the rate of the angle changing is constant. And that's easier to do, but what happens is the rate at which this beam touches the floor is not constant. Some areas will be just swept over really quickly, while others, they'll, it will be swept really slow. And that's where I think the interesting part of this problem comes in. And, and, and let me demonstrate what I mean. Let's say you're down here on Earth. So here's the Earth, let's pretend. You're down here on Earth, and some distance really far away are a couple other planets. So here's one planet and here's another planet okay and you get your little telescope out so get your little telescope out and you start looking at at this planet and then for you to move your telescope and look at this other planet doesn't take very much effort, right? It all, all you had to do was, was move this angle in here. And if you've ever looked through a telescope, you know a tiny little change in, in the angle of the telescope is going to really have a huge impact on, on where the telescope is pointed. And, and a way to see that is, let's, let's pick a distance for these planets. Let's say these planets are a million feet apart. I don't know how far the real planets are apart. I honestly have no idea. But let's say these two planets are a million feet apart. Doesn't seem unreasonable. So you, let's say you rotate your, your, your um, telescope here. All you have to do is rotate a couple of degrees. Let's say you rotate two degrees. That's all it takes to, to, from one planet to the other. You're looking at one planet, you rotate two degrees, and then you're looking at the other planet. And let's say you, you rotate that two degrees in one second. So down here, you just rotated two degrees per second. So not very fast, you just moved your thing over two degrees, it took you one second. On the other end of the telescope, where, where it's actually pointing, well, that just moved, that just moved a hundred Oh, or sorry, that just moved a million feet per second. Another way to think of it, if this wasn't a telescope, if this was a high-powered laser, the end of that beam, the very end of that beam was moving a million, or sorry, yeah, a million feet per second. It was here, and then it zoomed all the way over to here in one second, and that was a million feet it moved. So the end of that beam moved a million feet per second, even though you only rotated two degrees in, it, in, in that one second. So you could see that 
that because of the distance that we're talking about, a small rotation and a not a very fast one can result in an, ex in an extremely fast uh, movement of the end of that beam. So the same thing is happening here with our, with our security laser. The security laser, although the, the scale is much smaller, meaning we're not moving, we're not looking at planets, we're looking at something not that far away, but even still, the beam at the end here, this beam, is going to be moving, is going to be moving fast, uh, is going to be moving at different rates, depending on this angle. Out here, it's farther away from, from the camera, or from the laser. So out here it's going to be moving faster, and when you get closer to the 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 laser, like in here, it's going to actually be it will be moving slower. Okay, so then then the interesting part of this problem says, okay, well that's true, but we don't want that to happen. We want the rate at which it moves across the floor to be constant, the rate the rate at which the rotation can vary. So we're going to have a smart camera that says, okay, if 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 I'm at this angle, I need to slow down because you know, at the other end, it's moving too fast. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to say, okay, what is the what is that? What how could we program that that camera? Or in other words, if we kept the rate at which it, this beam moves across the floor, how could we find the variable rate of rotation of theta, or or the variable rate of rotation of the camera, and, and that will depend on theta. Okay, so a lot is going on in this problem. I'm just going to pause there. We'll start it up in the next video. Hopefully you have an understanding of why this problem is, is so interesting, or, or at least why it's interesting to me. We'll actually solve it in the next video. See you then.